Right guys, what's good, what's going on? Welcome back to another video and welcome back <laughs> to another new setting. I had no intentions of filming, I had no intentions of being where I am right now, currently. I was obviously back in London, but today I've had to come back up to the Midlands. Unfortunately, I've encountered the really, really shit event of my car got stolen last night. So it is what it is. It's just one of those things in life. I'm a big believer in there's no point getting upset or angry over things that you can't control. Am I pissed off that there's scummy people that would want to steal someone's car? Yes, but this is what insurance is for, so it is what it is. So I've come up to, to the Midlands for a, for a couple of days to spend some time in the comfort of, of being with, with my boyfriend and wearing his hoodie and <laughs> just get away for a couple of days. So yeah, so that's why I'm back here. But same as, as the last time I filmed here, Reese is at work this evening. So I thought, right, what better opportunity than to finish off the last two episodes of Heartstopper. So so yeah, I'm just, just thrilled to be able to have this opportunity just to at least make these couple of videos. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna focus my energy into that instead of negative energy into people that like to steal things from other people. So it is what it is. Now as always guys, thank you so, 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 so much to our amazing ever-growing community over on Patreon. I am, I'm almost kicking myself that I didn't open up Patreon earlier in my YouTube career because it's the best thing that I've ever done. I'm having an absolute blast creating exclusive content over there and just really engaging with you guys on a whole other level. So thank you so much. And as always, I wanna give a special shout out to our top tier members. And today I wanna to give a huge thank you to Diana Ferreira Lopez. Diana, thank you so much for your support, especially right now with everything that's going on. This kind of support from you guys, everyone on Patreon, but you top tier guys, it just means the world to me and is gonna make such a huge difference in my life and in the ability for me to make this content for this this channel. Just thank you so much. It it truly, I, I'm lost for words every time I think about it, I'm just blown away. So thank you so much. I'm loving, loving the conversations that we're having on Patreon. So Diana, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you. As always, I will be posting the full unedited reaction over on Patreon a day earlier than on YouTube. So if you're really enjoying these reactions and you want to see the full unedited version, then head on over to Patreon and come and join us. And I really, really thank you all for your support. Right, so straight into Heartstopper episode seven. We are almost there. Seven is my lucky number. I'm super, super excited. So episode six finished. Episode six was an amazing episode. It's one of my favorite. Obviously there's continuations of Nick's acceptance in his own bisexuality. Amazing developments within the friendship group, within the, the future Paris squad. And the episode ends with the, the big music concert that, you, you know, you, you get to see this the first moment where Nick's really kind of starting to support Charlie. And it's just, it's, their relationship is blossoming and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and we love it and we're here for it and we stan it and thank you, Alice. Yes, so episode seven, I am slightly dreading this one because I know that it's not a great one, but we're gonna jump straight in and we're gonna and see what happens. Netflix. How did you appear out of nowhere? <laughs> Older sister magic. All his friends. There's always such like a beautiful like golden hue okay. in all these scenes. I love it. Oh my god, so many pairs of Converse. No, I thought I had a lot of Converse, but that wow. Looks... She is the best older roses. sister. Thanks. I really, really hope that they do some form of adaptation. One of this winter, but two of Solitaire so that we get to see more from her because I think she's amazing. And like the actress and Tori, and I'd love to see more of that story arc. I think there's something quite meta about the fact that me and Tori have the same birthday, but she's the most amazing older sister. And my older sister is homophobic. Something quite meta about that. And I'm kind of here for it. I'm gonna wait for this loud car to pass. Oh God. I love the way this is lit with like a spotlight almost, a bit in like comic book form. Any of those boys says anything. One, his dad is such like a pillar of like positivity. I love, I love him. I, I, th I love him in the books as well. Like I can't remember which book it is, a scene where Charlie's mum kind of snaps at Charlie about Nick and Charlie's dad jumps in like, I can't remember what the exact phrasing is, but he's like, you know, you didn't handle that very well. And she's like, she says whatever she says mumbling but yeah i think he's just such a a nice kind of underdog i would say character and i i'm excited to see more of charlie's parents in the next follow-up seasons yeah love it and another classic nick jumper well you kind of are a gay nerd <laughs> <laughs> the banner is so cute nothing wrong with being a gay nerd oh for sake. that phrase i heard i didn't hear that last time but I, what, I can't remember what he says or something look at him like a little girl <sighs> 
I hope at some point we get some kind of understanding as to why Harry is the way he is. Maybe a little backstory would be nice. Understand maybe what his home life is like or if there's an... Yeah, I, I'd like to know because, I mean, I say that. I'm acting like everyone's kind of a really complex character. Some people are just pieces of shit. Harry might be one of them. Big Ben lurking as always. I'm not really hungry, to be honest. There it is, the foreshadowing. Sure. Char. Char. <laughs> oh, no. Can they just leave the rest of the group and just enjoy the cinema by themselves? Because they're just the cutest. But I do think, I know we've spoken about it before, I think that foreshadowing of Charlie's eating disorder is so fucking powerful. It's so subtly hinted on and it's so nuanced that you, again, I've said it over and over, but I really do think it's telling of a lot of people's mental health struggles that the, the signs are so, sm not so small, the signs can be so easily overlooked and it's just so heartbreaking. And yeah, I just think it's it's so powerful the way that they've touched on that in this. I keep pausing it. Reminds me of two things. One, I this is reminding me of my first ever kind of cinema date. It was with uh, an ex of mine of many, many years ago. Well, a long time ago now, actually. God, I'm old, I'm old. Um, I'd never been on a cinema date before and we went to go watch, I think, one of the Pirates of the Caribbean, if I remember correctly. And I just remember having the best time. I think cinema dates are underrated and they're so cute. And the second thing is, is just reminding me of is I had my first ever experience of a recliner cinema the other day. Reese and I went to go see the new Top Gun film and the local cinema to here is like one of the Odeon Luxes. Oh my God, why have I never experienced that before? Anyway, rambling. Oh, he's so desperately wants to like have that connection with him doesn't he? Oh the little pinky. That's fucking cute. You're a dog. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> like why can't we normalise that? Why can't we normalise a group of lads that go to the cinema together one of them just happens to be gay or bisexual. The fact that in normal society that you wouldn't even bash an eyelid. Bash an eyelid. Well, double entendre. Bat an eyelid if that if Charlie was a girl there. So well, I just hope and pray that one day that we get to a time where that is normalised. Quick question. What's it like being gay? <sighs> Here we go. Piss off. Like I feel please. sick in my stomach. It's none of your fucking business. Nick's not even my type. <laughs> you definitely have a crush on him. <laughs> that kind of gets me as well, like you can kind of see that that's still kind of like, Nick obviously knows that Charlie is only saying that in the moment to kind of defend himself and de to defend them both. But even just hearing Nick, uh, hearing Charlie say that, you can tell it kind of hurts Nick. But it just, it fucking kills me that no one else in this group, and this is the way it always is, no one else in this group would stand up like Nick would do and be like, Harry, what you're doing is wrong. Fucking leave the kid alone. It's just infuriating. You do. <laughs> Stop. Wait. Yeah, my heart rate is so high right now. I'm so sorry. It's fine, you know. Nick's apologies always feel like really tender and really genuine. Idiot. I'll see you at school. That is... <sighs> I think that's the probably the most heartbreaking thing about this scene is like... I. I'm sure all of you probably relate to this as well, but the fact that he's like, I'm used to it by now. And I think that became such a sad reality for all of us is that we all became used to this. It became the norm when it fucking shouldn't be. It's... I also, there's something so special in Nick's heart as well that I think, I think because he's so genuine and so kind and so loving and caring and compassionate, he always seems to try and see the good in people and like he's so taken back every time, like some of them were all also being really unfriendly, like he really didn't expect people to be anything other than decent, it's just, ah, oh, he's so wholesome, we need more Nicks, we need more Nicks. My Reese is a Nick. Oh, that music changed there. Charlie. Oh. How angry he's getting. Well, I believe that you're not going out with him. If anyone would ever want to go out with someone as desperate as you. Arsehole. Talk about projecting his own insecurities. I take it back. I fucking hate Ben. I now remember exactly why everyone hates Ben. So anything nice that I said in any previous episodes, disregard it. He is a word that I won't say on the internet, especially when the majority of my audience is American. That's all I'll say. His behavior is inexcusable. Down with Ben Hope. But it also makes me, from an acting point of view, makes me kind of smile a little bit knowing how close they are in real life. Like those scenes must have been so fun for them to shoot. Oh yes. So this is a problem with him being gay. Mm -hmm. None of us are being homophobic. Oh, just shut up, Harry. Isn't that funny that like everything he's doing clearly is homophobic, but when he's confronted about being homophobic, he's still defensive about not being homophobic. Hmm. Someone really needs to learn to take a joke. 
It's not a joke though, is it? I'm sure he can deal with it. Right, he's probably used to it by now. So why does that make it okay? Why is that a thing for people to be like, oh, he should be used to it by now. So many other people do it, so it's all right if I do it. It amazes me how, my God, there's another fucking ice cream van. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm being followed by ice cream vans. It amazes me that people aren't raised to be loving and accepting of all people and just to be kind. It, like, is that just kids or is that the way people have been raised? Like, it truly blows my mind. You can't help wanting to protect him, can you? Because he's a pathetic little fag. That word. I'm not a fighting kind of person, clearly, but I think if I don't know how I would react if someone genuinely called me that. People like Harry need to be put in their place, I think, sometimes. But yeah, that word. I'm British, there's not very many words that get me, but that does still like really, really deeply affects me. I think there is so much hatred and such a negative connotation and such a vile intention behind that word. It just makes me feel sick. And I really, really hate it when gays normalize using it because I just I just don't think it's okay. Oh, really Ellie. nasty stuff about Charlie. Sweetheart, you know, fighting's not the answer. I know. We know, Mum, we know. But sometimes she knows Charlie's as well. Charlie's really a special friend, isn't he? See, she knows. Oh my God, imagine if he'd come out in that moment. I think it's that music that's just got me, but oh my God. <sighs> yeah, she knows. Charlie always looks so cozy in bed. Ask Nick Nelson. He's got some serious anger issues. Do you have a fight? Yeah, he starts a fight when I've done nothing wrong. What's going on? You okay? I really like that Charlie, one, doesn't cower away from Harry in these moments and two, doesn't respond to him. I think it's so important. I think me at that age, if someone had, if one of the people that always used to say homophobic shit to me was like, you know, I'm joking, right? I'd have kind of diffused that situation immediately and gone, yeah, 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 I know. And I love that he doesn't. I love that he just says nothing and stays silent and impartial. I love that. At least he knows his place. Oh, go fuck yourself. Tal might be onto something there though. Didn't get hugged much as a child. I think we need a bit of Harry context. He started Look at Charlie, looks so panicked. You can see it in his eyes that he's thinking, this is all my fault, this is all my fault, this is all my fault. I'm tired of all of them. Oh, fucking hell, it breaks my heart. They're just so wonderful. Fuck's sake, Alice, this music. When people say they aren't music people, I will never understand it because it just gets me every time. Do you know that'll just make you both a target? Yeah, well, I can see that now. She's so wise. She's always so wise. Is there something actually going on between Nick and Charlie? There is. Oh my god, I don't remember this scene. Yeah. Oh my I god. Know. I genuinely don't remember this scene. Tara and oh, Darcy. Oh shit. But Charlie wants to tell you himself. Oh, Tara looks heartbroken. At the milkshake cafe. Oh, that's not good. Oh, Charlie. Oh, I love that camera pattern. Make sure you leave the bedroom door open a tad, okay? <laughs> Oh, parents. Oh I don't know why I'm so afraid of being alone. Oh my God. That just got me. Okay, okay guys, I'm starting to see it. All right, I take it back. I just need a little character development. Oh, Tao. And now Charlie's gonna feel like he can't win anything, right? He's gonna feel like he's losing his friends. He's messing up Nick's life. He's gonna blame himself for all of this. All right, mate. Oh, of course. He's just gotta be a dickhead about everything, hasn't he? You. Get it. You're gonna regret that. Oh my god, there's a dog. <laughs> so I was thinking. You scared the life out of me. Loki grateful for that fight there so that Charlie didn't get the chance to try and break up with Nick. <laughs> I don't mind her interrupting because she's so cute. Why do kids at school love a fight? I don't understand it. Loki would have liked Nick to show him something then. Oh, Charlie. Oh. <sighs> wow. I now remember most of that episode and I remember why I wasn't looking forward to it. Wow. That's, it's tough because Charlie must feel like his entire world is absolutely falling apart all around him. And, oh, it just breaks my heart. The, th the fact that he nearly breaks up with Nick back there is unreal. And I get why Tao is reacting the way he's reacting, but, oh. And it all boils down to homophobia. That's the bottom line of all of these issues because of homophobia. <sighs> wow, okay. <laughs> Wasn't quite expecting to be as affected by this episode watching it again as I have been. Why didn't I remember so much of that episode? Wow, okay. I'm gonna take a break. 
and go and have something to drink, I think, before I jump into this last episode, because I feel like that's put me in quite a bad emotional state. <laughs> but yeah, my god, what an episode. This normally these short series don't have such a a roller coaster of emotions and especially because the episodes are only like 20 minutes long, 25 minutes long. That episode's like 23 minutes long. Normally, you, that's not enough time to get such an incredible amount of character development and story arc in. But somehow, Alice has managed to do it. And I don't understand how. Normally, I'm such a huge advocate for like 16 episode, 40 minute seasons. Like that's like the staple for me that I think you need to get like a really good season in. But somehow... Her writing gets it across, and it's... So apparently her writing was so incredible that it stopped the camera from recording, so I apologise for this little cutscene. The trouble is with, with the Sony cameras, like the one I'm shooting on, is that they have a 30-minute record limit. So when you're doing a 30-minute TV show, it's kind of hard, and obviously this will cut out before the end. But yeah, it blows my mind how Alice manages to get such incredible character character development into such a short episode and such a short season it's just a real testament to her incredible writing but yeah that is it guys episode seven what an absolute whirlwind i definitely didn't remember how much of an emotional journey this was um if you would like to see the full unedited version of this video the links for the patreon are down in the description below um, and yeah, I will see you in the next video for episode eight and our last Heartstopper reaction video together. So yeah, until the next video, glad you in a few.